Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade game repair video for you today. We have, in the back of our store, several arcade cabinets that are sold um, that we're waiting to ship off to people who've paid for them and they're using trucking companies and stuff like that to pick them up. And one of those games is this Atari Asteroids that we have back here. I don't remember if we did a video when it, where we fixed this or not, but this was actually originally a Lunar Lander cabinet. So it has Lunar Lander side art. But it is now, and has been for a long time, an asteroid. So we sold this to a gentleman, and uh, he's got, a, like I said, a trucking company coming to pick it up. But before that, um, he asked us if we would mind installing a high score save kit in it. So whenever you um, play a... A Galaga's talking to us. Whenever you play a lot of the older games, they didn't actually save the high score after they were turned off, as uh, famously immortalized on Seinfeld, right? So if you turned off a Frogger, it deleted all your high scores. If you turned off an Asteroids, it deleted all your high scores. If you turned off a Galaga, it deleted all your high scores. So uh, over the years, people have made little kits um, that uh, you can install. They've got a little bit of circuitry on it where it actually remembers and saves your high score. So we're going to install that in this Asteroids. It's also a free play kit, which I don't understand because it's already on free play. So I don't know. They may just market it like that in case people are searching for Asteroids free play kit. So what I thought I'd do is I'll film this video and I'll show you how to do it, how to install the thing. And then I'm going to show you the difference between just a regular Asteroids board plan and an Asteroids board playing with the uh, high score save kit in it. So of course this is just the uh, this is it just set up normally. So what I'm, I'm going to set up the tripod and I'm going to play it just for a minute get a high score and show you how this the high score uh, screen works and then after that we'll see if we can update it to the high score save kit and see what the difference is. <laughs> We'll see if it changes the gameplay any too. It's, you know, it shouldn't, but uh, I'm sure it just plays the same ROMs. But this is it running on the original board, doing its thing. Now I'm not the world's greatest Asteroids player, but whenever it's just been reset, there's no high scores on it, so I, I should be able to beat a fake high score and at least get on the high score table, right? They got me, folks. I guess I should be trying to actually get a decent score. <laughs> get back into the swing of it here. Man, that thing's bright. Nothing like a vector monitor, right? Are we missing a sound? I don't think the UFO is making a sound. It's supposed to. No, oh, I should have moved. That's pretty good for never moving. All right, so it's giving us our three initials. Your score is one of the 10 best. Please enter your initials. Press rotate to select letter. Push hyperspace when letter is correct, All right? I always thought it was weird that if you hit the right one, it goes down, and if you hit the left one, it goes up. 
So I'm hitting the left one to go up. All right, so that's what the high score table normally looks like. But we're going to have to figure out what's going on with the sound first because you, you know, this won't, this, this, um, the ROM update's not going to fix like a sound missing or anything. <laughs> so we got to figure out what, why that sound's missing. Um, so we better look into the schematics on that. Okay, so these are the schematics about the sound section. There's this little chip right here that turns on all the sounds So it by an enable line. So it turns on the extra life when it turns on the ship fire. That's there, by the way. It turns on the ship thrust sound. That's there. It turns on the saucer fire sound. That's there. And it turns on the saucer sound enable. We're not getting a saucer sound. And then down here below it says saucer select. It also does that, right? So, mo ray pattern from hell. Okay, so the way it all works is that chip sends out this saucer sound enable and it goes through this N9 chip and it turns on this 4016 here which comes down here and goes through this transistor and blah, 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 and then turns on this 566 chip here, which sends out saucer sound. That's what we're missing. So there's some other stuff here, like up here there's a timer, 555, and then here's another part of the 4016, and that's where it says saucer select. So the saucer select is just how it changes which saucer's out, because there's a big saucer and a small saucer. So the big saucer, that's a tongue twister, the big saucer makes a certain sound, <laughs> and the small saucer makes a certain sound. Um, and we're not getting either sound. So my thought is that it's either this saucer sound enable isn't even happening, uh, or we got something right chia messed up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the cabinet with the game on, and I'm going to take this chip here, M10, and I'm going to ground each one of these outputs. I might have to time to five, I don't know, but I'm going to take a little jumper wire and I'm going to ground each one of these outputs. So I'm going to ground 10, and when I do that, it should, uh, I may have to, like I said, I may have to put it to five. I don't know, I'll do both and see. But if I put like 10 to five or ground or whichever one it should be, it should make the life enable sound. I mean the life sound, extra life sound. Nine should do the ship fire, seven should do the ship thrust, five should do the saucer fire, and four should do the saucer sound. So if all of those work, whenever you do it manually, then this chip must be screwed up because right now the saucer sound isn't, isn't working. You know what I mean? So maybe the chip isn't able to make that line go low or high, whichever it's supposed to do. I'm gonna guess high. Um, and so if that doesn't work, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna test this one, this N9. I'm gonna make 12, see how it's got a little line, a little circle around it? I'm going to make it go low because that the little circle means active low. So I'm going to make it go low. And again, I believe that's right. I, I didn't go to school for this. So I'm not an expert on it. I'm going to make N9 pin 12 go low and see if that makes the sound. You know, The reason I don't think it's the 555 timer, and I'm just, this is all theory, folks. I may be wrong about all this. The reason I don't think it's the 555 timer is because I think if that was screwed up, you would still get some kind of noise. I'm not getting any noise at all, like it's not even trying. Since that since that timer makes like a kind of warbling, uh, it, it basically those timers put out a frequency, you know, and they, they use that to make the sound change. I'm not getting any sound at all, so I don't think that's it. I think if that was messed up, I would still get a sound, it just wouldn't warble. So I'm gonna go in, like I said, and check these with a little jumper wire. Let's see what it does. Okay, folks, I've got it all rigged up inside the cabinet. Um, this is pin. In, this is chip M10. Uh, the one that we're trying to do is the saucer sound. That's pin 4. You delicately touch 5 volts to pin 4. Nothing happens. If you touch pin 5, which is the, the ship fire sound, you get a sound. It locks on because, you know, I'm not doing it right. But 7 is the rumble. 
and it's working. So that part is working fine. Um, I mean, the rumble is working fine and the uh, ship fire sound is working fine, but even if I do it manually, I can't get the, the rest of the schematics to make that uh, sound that we've got missing. So now I'm gonna try the one I was talking about, N9. I'm gonna try to make it go low. So I need to take this off five and attach it to a ground somewhere if I can find one. Here's my ground. All right, so now we're going to pin a uh, chip N9. We're going to make pin 12 go low. So this is N9. Pin 12. It'd help if I had something smaller. This is crazy doing it with a jumper like this. Don't try this at home, folks. Nothing. All right, so we know it's not that chip and it's not that chip because even if you do it manually, farther down the line, it's not working. So uh, we're gonna have to go back to the schematics. Okay, so I made this line go high, nothing happened. I made this line go low, nothing happened. So this chip is probably making the line go high and all of this is probably working unless they're both broke, right? But whenever you make this do what it's supposed to do, you still don't get a sound out. So we're looking at uh, probably this 566 unless one of these caps is bad. Um, I think the 566 is the biggest possible culprit you know a lot of times if you've got just part of the circuit missing it'll make a click sound which is that enable turning on and off and it just doesn't make the actual sound that it's supposed to but on this one it's not doing anything which leads me to believe that it's something on the output right and the way this works is all of those lines like see there it's a saucer sound goes out and then it goes up here to the audio output in each one of the different sounds goes through a resistor and then gets amplified. Well, all the other sounds are working except that one. It's actually two, you know, because they can change the, the uh, how fast the warble is. But everything else is working. So all of this is probably good. You might have a bad resistor, but, you know, those, usually resistors don't go bad. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to substitute in another one of these. If I can get it to scroll down. Substitute in another one of these 566s, which is a kind of expensive chip. Ooh, so I'm going to have to even see if I've got one of those somewhere, but I think that's our next step. All right, folks, let's see what we got here. If I don't... There it is. Our warble is back. Part of my <laughs> one-handed plan here. Okay, so I pulled the board out. Uh, here's the 556 chip that I swapped, and that did fix it. So we are on. Now we have a fully working board. So we're on to putting our high score kit in it. So we ordered this from Mike's Arcade. Go to mikesarcade.com. He's got a bunch of cool stuff. He's been around for a long time. And he, he uh, does a lot of Nintendo stuff, so he remakes like the Nintendo joysticks and buttons and stuff like that. So let's see what it all came with. I think that's it. Well, there's something else in there. Oh, hell. Wow. mikesarcade.com sales at mikesarcade.com see I was talking him up and I didn't even know that he'd given me a pin thank you Mike <laughs> so we are going to try this kit so we ordered asteroids high score save 59.95, 7.90 shipping. It was 67.85 to make your asteroids save everything. So here are. That's just to return it. 
I don't return a damn thing, people. I never return anything. I can go to the store, buy something, it not work, I won't return it. It's too much trouble. <laughs> that was a lot of money, I guess I would, but if this was broke, I guess I'd return it. But I'm not going to return it because I changed my mind or anything. <sighs> wow! Look at this! It doesn't come with any instructions, but they're on the internet, I believe, so maybe we should go look at that. So th this is really cool. So this is a Vector 2 ROM. Now see how it's in that socket, kind of in the middle? That's because it doesn't go in that socket. That chip goes right here. This is the, on the ROM board, these are the ROMs, but this chip here is the one that creates like the, I don't know about creates, but this is the Vector chip. It's the, like it actually has to do with the display and everything. And there's a version 1 and a version 2. So what he's done is he just includes the right version in, flesh, in case you don't have it. So I'm pretty sure this one is the right one already, so I won't need that chip. So I'll keep that. Thank you, Mike. So this is a ROM. It's a bigger ROM than the ones on the board. Basically, these three are the code. Some of the older boards had even more. That's what all these empty places are for. Some of the boards had like six ROMs that were smaller. This, this new board here has one chip that's bigger because these are so tiny. I mean, you, you could, on a modern chip, you could fit like a thousand of these on it, no problem. So there's three, and they fit all three on this one slightly bigger chip. Um, and then there's some other stuff here to make it work with, uh, to make it do the high score save. So I'm going to re remove this chip, and then I'm going to mount this on the board. You have to be careful to mount it the right way. See that little notch there? at the end of the chip. So that has to match that notch when you're 6502. So you gotta put it in like that. Right? Then you take this chip and put it in there. You take this chip, put it in there, but I don't think I need to. And that's all you have to do. It's as simple as that. So I'm gonna look at the instructions online just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, folks, so here's the instructions on Mike'sArcade.com. It says, step zero, make sure your game is fully working. So we did that, right? Okay. Step one, turn off power to the game. We did that. Step two, locate and remove the game PCB. We did that. Step three, remove the 6502 CPU chip. We were just talking about that, right? Insert the 6502 CPU into the daughter card. Don't do it backwards, blah, 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 blah. Insert the daughter card into the board set. So like I said, be careful to line up the notches the right way. If you put it in backwards, it'll fry everything. It might even fry your board, All right? Step six, optional, replace the vector ROM. Revision 2 Vector EEPROM is included as part of this kit. However, it is suggested that you only install the chip if you have a Revision 1 Vector EEPROM. That is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Again, you have to make sure you put it in right. If you put it in backwards, it will fry. Step 7, double check. Right? Step 8, power up the game and enjoy. Down at the bottom it says, as a side note, if you want, you can also remove the old code EEPROMs. These are located at the edge of the board near the 6502 CPU location. Okay, so we put it in there. So we're going to double check our work. So all we did was mess with this, right? So if you look, see the little notch down there? It lines up with the notch in the chip. And then the notch there also lines up with the notch on the board, right? So everything's the right direction. We didn't change any of these. Um, strangely, the way it's designed, this chip on the board goes backwards than all the other chips on the board. They probably shouldn't have done it that way. But this thing has been out since 2002. So who the hell am I to second guess what's well, been working great for 17 years now? So, so we've got that mounted in there, I believe correctly. We're going to leave my version 2 chip in there. I believe, I'm pretty sure that's a version 2 because look, all of the other ROMs are version 2. Now these ROMs you can just remove out of the board like it said, but I'm just going to leave them in there. Um, and we'll pop it back in the, in the uh, cabinet. We'll see if it comes up.
All right, so I put the board in and it came right up. And you can't really see too well because of the uh, focus, but at the top it says 3,800. So I put a high score on it. I turned off the game, turned it right back on, and the, the score was still there. So I'm going to go in and try to reset that score to get rid of it. And then we'll try putting a decent one on there. <laughs> if I can reach the test knob or figure out where it is. All right, so we put the game in test. See how it says revision 2A at the top? I'm pretty sure it does not do that on a regular Asteroids board. But we're running the, um, we're running the code for a, um, um, off of that, um, we're running the code off of that, um, the high score save board. So the way you uh, reset it is you hold left, right, thrust, and fire. And it says erased, which is exactly how they do it on Asteroids Deluxe. Is how Atari designed it um, on the next game, but on Asteroids they didn't design that in. All right, so that erased it. Let's go back out to the game. You can see at the top there's no there's no high score anymore. Okay, so let's play it. And we'll put a score on it, and then I'll turn it off and back on, and we'll make sure it saved it. Warble that we fought so hard for. Now, when the little one comes out, you'll hear a higher pitched warble. And again, the the new ROMs and everything on the on the high score save board won't make that happen. The sound is is a whole different part of the board. I like turning my play field here into a junkyard. <laughs> if there's not asteroids all over the place, I'm not happy. Might get the little one now. Pitch warble. There he is. such a cool timing thing in asteroids where it if you die it decides when to put you back on the screen where you're not in the way of an asteroid so that you won't immediately get killed see like how it's doing right now it's waiting till there's an open spot so it's, somehow they coded it where it can tell if you're probably going to get blown up as soon as they put you back in that spot you know all right so there's our game over now one of the things that they added to it on the high score save is that they made it where you can get a really high score and it'll save all of the digits that is not an issue with me folks i will not have to uh <laughs> but they made it where you can the digits can go farther so i think maybe that's moved over a little bit maybe so that you can put more a longer uh score on there Maybe we can look back on the video and see if that's true. And so now it says 79.90 at the top. Now over here on the left, that means what the last game played, you know, but in the middle is the highest score of all time, right? So let's turn it back off. So there it goes. Now on an Asteroids, immediately it deletes your 
high scores. It's immediately gone, so you don't have to wait any amount of time or anything. But we'll wait just a few seconds just to make sure, and then we'll turn her back on. And we'll leave it in the attract mode and just see if it... Yeah, there it is. So look, it's still on there. Fantastic. And you can see that it still says it in the middle at the top, but it doesn't sit, show it over on the player one score because uh, whenever you reset the game, it doesn't store that. Or when you start another game, it doesn't store that. So there you go. That is the Braze Technologies Asteroids High Score Save Kit that's been out since 2002. You can get it at mikesarcade.com and a bunch of other places too. All right, so that worked out pretty good, and we've got the uh, we fixed that little sound thing that we found too. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below and let us know what you think. And if you've got this uh, high score save kit already in your machine or not, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this for you, because we didn't have to do that, folks. It was just out of the goodness of our heart, right? So leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for filming it for you, and uh, subscribe to us if you haven't already. Did you know? that only 15% of the people that watch our videos actually subscribe to us. That's a travesty, folks. We gotta get, those are rookie numbers, people. We gotta get those up. All right, so leave your comments below. We'll see you on the next video, Asteroids.